Hello and welcome back to the uh, Amateur Radio Technician License Course. Uh, this is Lesson 2, Part 1. Uh, let's get started because it's a great day to learn. I'm your instructor, uh, Gary Stevens, KE2GS. In Lesson 2, we're going to be talking about Sub-Element 2 which are operating procedures. There are three exam questions out of the three groups. And we're going to be covering station operation, uh, choosing an operating frequency, uh, calling other stations, uh, trans, uh, test transmissions, procedural signs, use of minimum power, choosing the operating frequency, the band plans, uh, calling frequencies, and uh, last but not least, repeater offset. Let's deepen our understanding of uh, what a repeater is by looking at a block diagram. Obviously, a repeater needs a transmitter as well as a receiver. Uh, it also needs an antenna and some uh, feed line to go from the uh, transceiver to the uh, antenna. A repeater also uses a device called a duplexer. And what this does, it facilitates uh, sharing the antenna from the receiver and the, the transmitter. So they, both things can occur simultaneously or concurrently. Now obviously, if the transmitter and the receiver were both on the same frequency, uh, they would interfere with each other. So to avoid interference, what uh, is normally done is the frequencies are offset. Uh, offset are sometimes called splits or shifts. Uh, they could be plus or minus. And the amount that the frequency is offset is a function of which band we desire to offset. Most important uh, offsets for the technician class licensee is perhaps uh, 2 meters and 70 centimeters. Uh, you should know that the 2 meters offset is typically uh, plus or minus 600 kilohertz. And for 70 centimeters, it's plus or minus 5 megahertz. One test question is 600 kilohertz is a common repeater frequency offset for the 2 meter band. Another important operation mode is uh, called simplex. Uh, simplex is simply transmitting and receiving on the same frequency. If there's no particular person that you care to talk to, you just want to talk to you know whoever's on the air, uh, you could throw out your call sign, uh, but you would want to do that on a uh, what's called a, a calling frequency. The test question is 146.520 megahertz is the national calling frequency for FM simplex operations in the two meter band. Again, the offset on the 70 centimeter band is five megahertz. And the test question reads something like plus or minus five megahertz is a common repeater frequency offset on, in the uh, 70 centimeter band. The next question is an appropriate way to call another station on the repeater if you know the other station's call sign is to stay the uh, station's call sign and identify with your call sign. And the following is an example of that. N2RRQ, this is KE2GS. Uh, we answer in a similar fashion. For example, if someone calls CQ, 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 this is KD3ABC, uh, we would answer something like KD3ABC, this is K4XYZ. And the question is, uh, transmit the other station's call sign followed by your call sign is how you should respond to a station calling CQ. Now we're never supposed to transmit without giving our call sign. So if you're making a test transmission, you would just say something like, this is a test transmission, KD6QRS. So identify this transmitting station is a requirement when making an on-air test transmission. And here's another question dealing with the repeater uh, offset. So the question is, the difference between the repeater's transmit frequency and the receive frequency is what is meant by the repeater offset. And you can tell here that the, uh, the RX uh, or downlink and the uplink uh, frequencies uh, differ by 600 kilohertz, which uh, is indicative of the 2 meter band. 
So I forgot to mention that uh, what CQ means. Uh, it's basically just a procedural signal that means calling any station. So, for example, CQ, CQ, this is KD3, ABC. So the question is, the meaning of the procedural signal CQ is calling any station. Uh, when using a repeater, it's not necessary to call CQ. If you're getting on the uh, repeater channel or, or a particular repeater, uh, all you have to do is give your call sign. So, for example, KD3ABC. So the question is, your call sign is a brief statement that indicates you are listening on a repeater and looking for a contact. The band plan for the amateur radio can be found on the uh, ARRL website and it's uh, voluntary guidelines. Uh, so the question is on the exam, a band plan which beyond the privilege established by the FCC is a voluntary guideline for using different modes or activities within the amateur band. This one's a repeat of a uh, previous question, just worded differently. Simplex describes an amateur station that is transmitting and receiving on the same frequency. So this question uh, was kind of difficult to reword, so I just left it as a question. The following is a guideline when choosing an operating frequency for calling CQ. Uh, first, li or listen first uh, to be sure that nobody else is using the frequency. Then ask if the frequency is in use and make sure that uh, you are on your assigned band. So we're set on the 2 meter simplex calling frequency. We can't hear anybody talking. So first we'll ask to see if the frequency is in use. Is the frequency in use? No response. We're in our assigned band. Now we just uh, simply call CQ. CQ, 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 this is KE2GS. CQ, 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 this is KE2GS. Nobody's there. Uh, we'll try try again next time, right? This brings us to uh, part 2B, uh, VHF, UHF operating practices. This deals with uh, single sideband phone, FM repeater, uh, or simplex, uh, splits and shifts, uh, CTCSS, DTMF, tone squelch, carrier squelch, uh, phonetics, operational problem resolution, and cue signals. First, a little demonstration of a reverse split. Performing a reverse split allows us to uh, listen on the repeater input frequency. Uh, so sometimes if things aren't set up right, uh, you can hear a person on the input frequency, but you can't hear them on the output. So the question for this reads, the most common use of a reverse split function of a VHF UHF transceiver is to listen on the repeater's input frequency. And to reiterate that uh, this is a troubleshooting procedure. Now we need to talk a little bit about repeater access tones. The purpose of these tones is to uh, prevent uh, accessing multiple repeaters at once. It works by the receiver decoding uh, subaudible tones, uh, and once it's accepted, it will then key up the repeater. And different brands of radios or different manufacturers uh, have different names for the access tones. Uh, CTCSS, or Continuous uh, Tone Coding Squelch System, is uh, one such name, and the other is uh, PL, which uh, is a trademark for uh, Motorola. Uh, then they're also called uh, privacy codes or tone, and uh, some call them uh, digital coded uh, squelch. Fortunately, the access tones are usually published along with the 
uh, repeater frequencies. Um, they can be a private repeater, and they but they give them out if you subscribe to their service or you're a member of the, the club. Uh, they can also be announced when the uh, repeater identifies itself, which happens occasionally. Uh, but tones are generally programmed in the radio along with the frequency and the offset. To learn how to do this, you would have to look at your manual for your specific radio. Another way to look at the continuous uh, tone coded squelch system is to think of it as a key. So uh, it's a key to uh, enable the transmitter on the repeater. The test question is CTCSS is a term that describes the use of the subaudible tones transmitted along with the normal voice audio to open the squelch of a receiver. This question is similar to the reverse split question. If a station is not strong enough to keep the repeaters receive squelch open, Listen on the repeater's input frequency, and it might allow you to receive the station signal. So there's several reasons why you uh, may not be able to access your repeater, um, but you can hear, hear the output or hear other people talking. And as described before, uh, you have an improper uh, transceiver offset. The repeater may require the proper CTCSS tone from your transceiver. The repeater may require the proper DC S tone from your transceiver. A common issue when using a repeater is that uh, you can over modulate. Uh, this is caused by speaking into the microphone uh, too closely or speaking too loudly. Um, so the question on the exam is you're talking too loudly might be the problem if a repeater user says that your transmissions are breaking up on voice peaks. DTMF or Dual tone multifrequency is commonly used on uh, landline telephones. Um, it's a, a signaling system that goes over the voice frequency. Uh, the tones are audible, and actually uh, some talented people can play Old MacDonald Has a Farm on a, on a good touchstone phone. For the exam, you know, need to know that uh, DTMF is a type of tone that's used uh, to control repeaters linked by the Internet Relay Linking Project, or IRLP protocol. Uh, digital Mobile uh, Radio, or DMR, is relatively new. Uh, it allows uh, talking worldwide uh, over a repeater network that's uh, interconnected uh, via the Internet. It was standardized by the European Telecommunications Standard Institute, or ETSI. It introduces a new concept called talk groups. Uh, so the question reads, you can join a digital repeater's talk group if you program your radio with the group's ID or code. So once you get on a repeater, you'll find that uh, some people are overzealous and they like to talk and talk and talk, sometimes at the expense of others. So everybody needs to take their turn in some orderly fashion. So the test question is, uh, when two stations transmitting on the same frequency interfere with each other, which common courtesy should prevail, uh, but no one has absolute right to the amateur frequency. We need to think of a DMR talk group as simply a method of grouping uh, many radio IDs into a single digital contact. Uh, in other words, a talk group organizes radio traffic in a specific way for DMR users uh, that want to discuss the same topic and not be bothered with the conversations of others. So this is kind of, a, again, a unique uh, concept uh, specifically for digital radios. Uh, but the test question is, a talk group on a DMR digital repeater is a way of groups of users to share a channel at a different times without being heard by other users on the channel. Well, you're not expected to memorize all of the Q signals. <clears throat> you are expected to uh, know a few of them. Uh, QSL uh, or QSY is one uh, changing frequency and QRM is another. So QRM is a signal that indicates that you are receiving interference from other stations. QSY is a Q signal that indicates you're changing frequency. The band plans are available on the uh, ARRL uh, website and it's uh, a good idea to look at least uh, the uh, 2 meters, 70 centimeters, and 10 meters for the exam purposes. Uh, so one of the questions is the simplex channels are 
des uh, designated in the VHF UHF plan so that stations with m mutual communication ranges uh, can communicate without tying up a repeater. Another question is in at least some portions of all of the bands is where single side band phone may be used in amateur bands above 50 megahertz. We will dwell more into single sideband uh, phone in uh, future lessons. There are some repeaters uh, that are connected uh, to each other uh, or they're linked by the internet. Uh, for example, on the East Coast, uh, you could travel from Florida all the way up to Maine, I believe, and be able to talk over a linked system. Uh, what's nice about that is when you're keying up the uh, repeater that you're talking to, it also in, in turn uh, keys up the repeaters uh, and other repeaters in the system. And the test question is something like a network of repeaters where signals received by one repeater or repeated by all the repeaters describes a linked repeater network. Well that's it for lesson two part one. Up next is uh, public service. We'll be talking about emergency and non-emergency operations, applicability of FCC rules, and we'll talk about RACES and ARIES. So until next time, keep studying.